So Rona now in pursuit of his first major title. And straight away it's Nick Rose who's taking the lead. Rose in front with McLeod of England second, Laurie Spence is third, Tony Simmons four, and Rod Dixon up there five. Right on the outside, Steve Jones of Wales. And Rose has gone off in front. He's opened up seven, eight metres. And now it's 10 or 12. No one taking up the pace except Henry Rono, who decides Rose has gone too far. Now, these two have competed against each other so often on the American circuit, they know each other well. Nick Rose, a member of the Bristol Athletic Club, who, of course, has been at University of America for several years. Now, a former student of the University of Western Kentucky. Rose leads for England. Rono in second place at the moment. Brendan Foster's third. Fourth is Tony Simmons. Five is Laurie Spence. Six is Nat Muir. Seven is Steve Jones. Mijoki of Kenya going up on the outside. Approaching the end of the first lap and the gap has closed. And that lap, 62.5 seconds. The interest in this race reflected in the stadium. Almost every seat sold weeks ago. In fact, a lot of the uh, spectators came very late because the sun on the far side three hours ago was so hot it was impossible to sit down there. But that stadium now is packed. That stand now is packed. Rose leads. Rono second. Simmons third. Foster four. Koskai of Kenya five. Jones of Wales six. Spence Scotland seven. Muir Scotland eight. Interesting that, that when Nick Rose went off, the first man to spot the break was Henry Rono, and he went straight after him, because whenever you talk to Henry Rono, one of the three names he'll always mention is Nick Rose. They race against one another in the United States on the boards, and he's got the greatest respect for him. Three times Nick Rose has beaten Henry Rono, and so it was an immediate response out there. And as David Coleman was saying, conditions have changed so dramatically at 4 p.m. this afternoon, it was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It's now 7.40. It's much cooler. There's a wind about, and it even looks as though it might rain. And Rono steps up the pace because that second lap got three seconds. It was a 65.5. First lap, 62.5. So Rono leads. Foster takes up the chase, and Rono's got a test Foster, and the tactics are right because Foster, just four days ago, had that very hard 10,000-meter race and clearly, Rono's going to find out what's left in Foster's legs. Rose is third. McLeod, four. So England, two, three, four. Niamh Bui, Tanzania, five. Then the two Welshmen, Tony Simmons, six. And Steve Jones, seven. Majoki of Kenya going up on the outside. Nat Muir is there. Laurie Spence, Rod Dixon, Alan Thurlow. But Rono out in front. And Foster now takes him on. Now, is Foster slowing it down or speeding it up? Coming up to complete three laps. And Foster said to me the other night when we gave him a lift back to the village after the 10,000 metres, how do you work out Rono? How can you compete against him? Because his tactics seem to be so strange. So, Rono responds. And the mental battle out there, the battle of will, is developing. Foster, remember, beaten by another Kenyan in the last few strides four years ago in this race when Ben Gipcho took the gold medal. And when you look back at the list of former champions in this Commonwealth Games, 5,000 meters, meters, it reads like a debret of middle distance running. The champion, Ben Gipcho, now retired from Kenya. Before that, it was Ian Stewart of Scotland, then Kip Kaino of Kenya, then Molly Halberger won it twice, and before that, Chris Chataway. So this race has shown that you've got to have a real pedigree in middle distance running to win it. And there are three Kenyans up in the first five, and that's fascinating because the, the battle of wills was almost like the David Bedford race in Christchurch of four years ago. And Masioki has joined uh, Koskai with Henry Rono. And coming up to join them is a fan, the tallest character there, interesting guy, that from Tanzania, Suleiman Nayambui, who so often ran in the shadow of Fulbert Bailly, but fourth in the Commonwealth Games 5000 in Christchurch, and another of the very few men to beat Henry Rono. He's beaten him over two miles indoors. The man running in blue, running in fifth place at the moment. And Rono is really trying to find Foster out. That last lap was 63 seconds, and now when it hurts, and they're a long, long way from home, eight laps to go, 
Rono's asking the questions of Foster in the sense that he wants to find out whether Foster has fully recovered from that 10,000 metres. Foster in third place, though, is uh, going along, keeping it even. And they went through four laps. That's an approximate mile in four minutes, 15 seconds. And at this moment, they're on schedule for a near world record pace. Alan Thurlow already beginning to struggle at the back, and Laurie Spence has lost touch. And the uh, PA confirms that they're just running on a schedule within three seconds of world record pace. So the two Kenyans out in front now. 2.60, Kip Koskai. Got a best 1500 meter time at 3.38. He's one of the few Kenyans not at an American university. And they're making Foster work. Foster's become detached. Seven laps left. I Miss mean, Joki takes it on now. Or rather, Koskai takes it on from uh, Rono with Foster in third place. Rod Dixon is four. McLeod is five. Rose goes at five. Ahead of McLeod is now six. Seventh place is Hutton. Eighth, Nyan Bowie. And ninth, Miss Joki. Tenth is seven. And the two Kenyans getting away. It's a desperate gap to develop at this stage, and Miss Yoki realizes that, and he's gone up to join them. Can Foster respond? Nick Rose nursing himself in the middle of the field, but they can't let these Kenyans get away, surely. Well, the only clean sweep we've had in any track and field event at the moment is the 3,000 meter steeplechase, and it was three very good Kenyans. It's interesting to see that when Rudd Dixon threaded his way through the field, he stopped at the shoulder of Brendan Foster. He didn't try and close the gap on the Kenyans. And if they can maintain this pace, well, they're going to answer all the question marks that have been raised about the distant races out here. Whether altitude or heat or dehydration is playing an effect, these three Kenyans are really getting away now and running a very fast time indeed. McLeod beginning to respond. The three Kenyans are clear. And Henry Rona looks back. And this is good from him. He sees what a gap he's got. He knows if he can break them now, they'll never get back to him. So it's Rono who kicks on in front and stretches the whole field out. And Rose, who's beaten him three times on the American circuit, is now 20, 30 metres behind. The three Kenyans in front. Then McLeod, then Nyan Bui, then Foster, then Alistair Hutton, then Rod Dixon, and then Rose. But they just cannot get on the tail of the Kenyans. Look at McLeod there. He knows what it's about. He knows he's got to get there, and he's done just that. He's got to sit in behind them now and let them nurse him round. And Rono realizes that McLeod's got there. Knows he must have taken a lot out of himself. And so Rono kicks again. These are first-class tactics by the Kenyan. He knew what McLeod had done. He had a look to see who it was. Five laps left. And when he was hurting McLeod and McLeod wanted to rest, Rono made it harder. So just under five to go. Rono leads. McLeod second. Mazzocchi and Koskai together for Kenya. Then Nyan Beauty of Tanzania. Brendan Foster tucked in behind him and they're getting back with the leader. Foster's run a much more even pace race than the leader. The laps have been 62, 65, 64, 63, 65, 65, 64. And they really are motoring. They're just outside the world record. A Rono leads, McLeod right in behind him. McLeod who got the bronze medal in the 10,000 metres and seems to have recovered rather more quickly than Brendan Foster, but Foster is by no means out of touch. This time they've got four laps left and this machine in front moving beautifully. Rono now, six metres clear of McLeod and going away again. There's the kick on the bend. This time he's running sharp bends and slower straights. And I can only repeat Brendan's cross, que, Brendan Foster's question of four nights ago, how can you work this man out? And McLeod can't go with him. And Rono is now 15 metres clear of McLeod. But Foster is beginning to show again. He's up there in fourth place, being chased and tracked by Nyan Bowie. McCoster almost back there with McLeod. Rono looks back to check. And I would say the dangers evaporated. Surely he'll not lose a lead of this sort. The other athletes who've been engaged in the 10,000 metres earlier had such a punishing race. 
It should now be about who's second. Well, the battle for the second place. I must say, all credit to uh, the Elzik Harrier, who really went with the Kenyans when they wanted to go. He's got Tanayambu in his shoulder now, McLeod, and he's back and forth. Brendan's about five yards detached from him, but uh, a splendid piece of running from the boy from the northeast. Rono gets away. Nyambui is in the shadow of Koskai. And then McLeod goes again and opens up yet another gap on Brendan. McLeod pushing himself. It's a punishing way to run a race. And Nyambui trying to close the gap on Rono. And McLeod goes back into third on Nyambui's shoulder. Rono now 25 metres clear of Nyambui. And, and again, quoting Brendan Foster, he felt that Diane Bowie had made a mistake the other night in running in the 10,000, but clearly Diane Bowie has recovered from that race faster than Foster. But for Foster, it was a winning run, and he certainly had to hurt himself to win. So, Foster is having a look around to see whether he's got a chance of a medal. He's back in fifth place as they come around now with just over 800 to go. Henry Rono. comes round. He's got two to go. Mazzioki chases now for Kenya. Then McLeod is sticking hard with the Kenyan. Niam Dewey is next. Foster next. Nat Muir of Scotland next. Then Rod Dixon, Tony Simmons, Koskai, and Alistair Hutton. Some more acceleration and deceleration for the leader. Fast round the bend. He just slowed it down again in the straight. Mazzioki, McLeod, and Niam Bowie there, and they were all in the 10,000, so they're all equally tired in many ways. They've all had the same recovery problem. And McLeod's taking it on from Mizuki. Whether he's wise at this stage, I'm not sure. Brendan Foster still not able to get back with that uh, group of three that's chasing the silver medal. Nat Muir is just leading Foster. So, uh, Tony Simmons. Rono looks back. There's no way they'll catch him. But what a race for the places. So, Rono on the way to his second gold in the game. He's won the steeplechase, which he won without pressure. And now he gets the bell in the 5,000. So, who's going to be second? Mazzocchi there, Niamh Bui, McLeod. Foster's getting with them. Foster's working hard to get another medal. He's about five yards behind Mick McLeod. But Rono's ruined the race. It could have been a tremendous race if Rono hadn't been there. But watch him go, encouraged by that vast crowd in the back straight. We've now got a bunch of five runners chasing the silver medal. They're all together. Foster's joined them and Muir's joined them. 200 metres to go for the leader. And Miss Yoki's made the break for home in second place. Chased by Foster and McLeod and Niamh Bowie. Muir's not in touch any longer. There's the race for the silver. The two Englishmen battling with the Kenyan and the Tanzanian. But meanwhile, the gold in the safekeeping of Henry Rono, the latest in the long list of great Kenyan runners. Rono comes out in front. It's going to be a second Kenyan, Masyoki in second place. And Foster has beaten McLeod for the bronze. Masyoki takes the silver. Foster gets the bronze. McLeod finishes fourth. Nyambui five. Muir six. Tony Simmons seven. Rod Dixon eight. Alistair Hutton, 9, Kip Koskai, 10, and the race for 11th place between Nick Rose, who's been very disappointing, and Steve Jones, with Steve Jones looking like getting the better of it. That's Hutton coming in, just behind him, Kip Koskai, 